that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of as you're able. Good morning and welcome to worship at New Life Metropolitan Community Church. No matter who you are or how you self-identify, know that you are indeed a child of God and always, always welcomed here. If you're joining us on site, uh, know indeed that we're delighted to have you joining us, not on site, but online. On site and online, we're all together, right? Amen to that. Would you join us for our gathering call? And I'll read it in English and then ask you to respond in bold. And Reverend Alberto will read it in Spanish. Feel free to try your hand at Spanish if you'd like. Just as a body, though one, has many parts. But all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Pero todas sus partes forman un solo cuerpo, así también Cristo. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. Ya sean judíos o gentiles, esclavos o libres. We were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Así también el cuerpo no se compone de un solo miembro, sino de muchos. God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Para que no haya división en el cuerpo, sino que sus partes se preocupen unos por otros por igual. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Si una parte sufre, todas las partes sufren con ella. Si una parte es honrada, todas las partes se alegran con ella. Now you, we are the body of Christ, and each one of us is a part of it. Ahora vosotros somos el cuerpo de Cristo, y cada uno de nosotros es parte de él. Like, that's the song. That's the next. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to continue. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures as we sing together. We are the body of Christ. <laughs> Bye. 
Gracious and merciful creator of us all, a savior of us all, a Holy Spirit that connects us and allows us to be your love, your presence to each other. We thank you this day. We praise you this day for not letting us be alone in this journey, that not only are you with us, but you connect us to each other as the body of Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Turn around now, and I want you to do this today. I want you to turn around to your neighbor, maybe somebody to know, and say, You are the body of Christ. And now I want you to do this. <clears throat> now I want you to do this. I am the body of Christ. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I praise God that our God is not a stick-in-the-mud kind of God, but a God that allows us to experience presence and joy and connection to each other and to share a laugh, not laughing at someone, but together to know that true joy that comes from knowing that we are beloved children of God and absolutely nothing can take that away from us. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. In weeks coming, you will see Jen back up here doing things uh, during the announcement. She has not been banished to the hinterlands. But for the sake of time this morning, since she takes longer than I do, <clears throat> very quickly I'll call your attention to what's happening, just a couple of things that I'm going to say. And Joy and Tony, if you could begin making your way to the front, because uh, this is a special Sunday for us. We're holding a lot of things in our hands. Yesterday, as you know, we had an incredible service yesterday, a memorial celebration of life for Odessa. And thank you for all of you who were here and showing it was very emotional. Family from Georgia was here and her nieces and, and family that were here. And those, those girls now are older adults themselves and they started coming here when they were small, but yet they remembered how we as a church family were to them. And this is still home. And that's what it's supposed to be about, isn't it? In so many ways. So we connect with God in each other here in this space, but also outside in the community and to our extended families and families of choice. Never let us forget that. So a couple of things after worship today, uh, there is, and we'll talk more about this in a moment, there is a catered lunch. Uh, it, the cost is $100 per plate. No, I'm kidding about that. Uh, it is free. It is being uh, as a way of saying thank you, and we'll say more about that in a few moments with Joy and with Tony. Uh, if you can stay for a few moments after that luncheon, there's a congregational forum where we'll be just giving an update on how we ended last year and as we go further into 2024. Next week uh, on Saturday is Engage Norfolk. Uh, I think Joey has lined up, and thank you, Joey, for lining up volunteers to be at the table. But if you didn't get a chance to talk to him and you still want to, but we also want folks to come and just be present and circulate with folks who are there. It's a wonderful opportunity, and it's just organizations and different groups throughout Norfolk that are connecting in a civic kind of way as part of the community. And so it's important for us to realize that our presence is important too and to be a viable, visible presence into the community. Next Sunday afternoon, uh, Charles, thank you for hosting our Dirty Snow Persons party at your house. It is a potluck at 4 o'clock. Uh, so go home, grab something, go buy pollards or whatever, get some chicken or whatever it is that you want to bring. All you need to bring is something that you don't want. <laughs> It doesn't even have to be a gift that you've gotten from somebody else. And then we will have a fun way of getting rid of that for you. There's only, you know, when we come to bingo, it's, it's Molly makes the rules. It's Mark makes the rules on this one. So just be prepared. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. <clears throat> As we get closer, and this is the last one that I'm going to point out today because I want you to read what's here in your emails. If you're not getting our weekly emails, please let Jen know so that we can make sure that you're added to our email list. This year, what? Start spamming you, okay. Um, 
Hearts and Ashes is what we're calling our observance of Ash Wednesday this year because it falls on Valentine's Day, which is a hard thing to hold in both hands. But we are that evening going to have chili and soup and cornbread or bread. So if you're willing and want to uh, share some of your expertise in putting chili or soup together, please see me that, about that evening. And then we're going to do uh, a combination of celebrating God's love, but also acknowledging as we begin this journey toward Lent. And so it'll be a little different way. We'll still offer the imposition of ashes, but this year we're doing the glitter ashes too. And because our community needs to know that we are part of the body of Christ. Can I hear an amen to that? Let me hush now, as, since Jen's not up here for me to pick on, but let me pick on Joy and Tony. Joy and Tony have led our efforts going back to starting to talk about this in 2019 and then our capital campaign 2020 to, through 2023. Joy and Tony, let me invite you to come up. Here's another mic. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. And uh, Joy's going to do all the logistical things. I'm going to just kind of talk. I want to thank you all. This is a wonderful church. And I was reminded of that yesterday. We're more than a house of worship. We're a community. We're a family. But I do want to talk about this a capital campaign in terms of how it happened from my perspective. Uh, we had teams, uh, several teams, and I'm just going to name a few of them. Uh, and this was, sometimes you see just Joy and myself up here, but it was the whole congregation that got this thing going. We had a communication team. We had a prayer team. And I just want to say one thing about one special team. If I can get it out of here. You know, I'm getting that age according to the pastor that I can't remember things, so I have to bring paper up now. So we had the advanced commitment team, the lead gift team, youth and children team. We had many teams. But one thing I do want to say, there was one special person. First of all, all the teams that had captains, and they got other folks. So for the most part, just about everybody in the church participated. But there was one special person that really, I think, and night, so many people, and that was jo Joan Finley. Yeah. She's not with us now, but oh, she was so passionate about this. And she worked so hard to get people involved in raising the money for this congregation, for this church, so that we could have this building. So now I'm gonna turn it over to the chief here, and she can do the rest. <laughs> I, I wasn't Navy, but are you demoting me? <laughs> I don't know those two. <laughs> Is it supposed to be Admiral? I don't know. <laughs> now you're promoting me. I'll take that. <laughs> Although I'm still not Navy. <laughs> That's right. Go Army. Colonel, Colonel Dew. Oh, Colonel. Okay, good. Um, so as you can see in your bulletin, and I'm throwing the paper all over, um, we wanted to make sure that, you know, at the end of the three years, the capital campaign was from 2020 to, through 2023, um, we didn't reach the amount that we set as a goal. Um, we did have a lot of commitments come in, and there's still a few commitments that are still to come in. But we wanted to make sure that as part of saying thank you, that we were able to have a celebration. Because it's thanks to all of you that we brought in the amount that we did. And the end of 2023, the amount was 241644 That is huge toward being able to purchase this building. And a lot of that came in in the very first year, which enabled us to have the down payment to actually purchase this building. So on behalf of the capital campaign team, we decided we needed a celebration luncheon, and that's why after service today, we've got a crew back there that is setting up a nice, really nice um, luncheon for everyone to partake uh, before we get into the forum. And one of the people that was instrumental in all of this was Reverend Dr. Tom Melzoni. So, has anybody seen Tom? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, y'all. <laughs> uh, let me take this off. Hair and makeup, please. Check. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> in all seriousness, we had planned, uh, and Elizabeth kept saying, isn't it great you don't have to preach this morning? 
On Wednesday, I got a, t a text from Reverend Dr. Tom Melzoni saying that he had been admitted to the hospital and had gallbladder surgery on Thursday. So we're going to have a special prayer right now for Tom and for his healing because you're exactly right. Tom, we searched going into 2019 uh, when we began to talk about the capital campaign, we weren't even sure how to begin. And so through a couple of references through in Metropolitan Community Churches, we were connected with Tom. And some of you know Reverend Terry Steed down in Orlando, who was an intern here for a while back. Uh, Terry's got more of a country accent than I do. And the first time we met Tom was all, she and I were together on a uh, cohort thing on Zoom. And I texted or typed in the chat to Terry, he's more country than you are. And, but Tom came and started to help us understand some of the nuances, things he could say that I can't say, things that he could say that you all couldn't say or we couldn't say to each other to help us understand. Because who would have ever believed that in the middle of a pandemic that, we, that God would allow us to do what you all did, we all did together as a, as a church family? And my faith wasn't even there. I'm thinking, how do we do this? And one day I can remember saying to Tom, oh my goodness, I don't think we're moving as fast as we need to and we haven't raised as much. And Tom said, Mark, when in any other year have you all raised this much above your general offering? And he was exactly right. So we'll say praise God for that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's say a special prayer now for Tom, gracious and merciful God. And Tom, if you're listening, know that we feel your presence here with us today too. And I hope that you feel our presence with you as we lift you up for continued healing, giving thanks for the wisdom for the doctors to be able to take care of you. But you and your whole family just know that we are holding you as God holds you too as we pray for healing and grace and give thanks for how you have helped us to get to where we are in God's way this day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And by the way, if you did not get a mug uh, during the campaign, we do have some mugs in the back. Uh, just pick one up and, you know, you know me. And there is a commitment card if you want to do that too. Thank you. Speaking of commitment, there is this, we're holding a lot of things in our hands today. And you see what is there. And it's interesting, Joy, you were talking about being promoted or demoted. Uh, I think we must have demoted uh, a music director to the back row because Scott's sitting on the back row today. Scott Giles, would you come up here for just a few moments? I think I told you when you may, went from commander to captain that I wanted some flag officers in this church. Well, he didn't make flag officers, so we, we decided to demote him for music director. No, I'm kidding about that. <laughs> Scott, in the middle of the, pan camp of the pandemic, you stepped up in a way that very few people could. Yes. And not just during the pandemic to music, but just being who you are from even the times that you've preached or just how you are and who you are and how you interact and your gracious nature with people Thank you for being here. You have um, been in this church longer than I have. Although you went away for a while and then you came back as you had different went assignments and, and went away and came back. <laughs> and the neat thing was he always came back. That was really cool. And let that be a lesson to all of us. This is always home. You can always come back. Now, and I was kidding about you being demoted, you've retired as a captain in the Navy. And you and Arnold are going to be in. Arnold, come up here too. Come on, Arnold. <clears throat> You and Arnold are going to go back to Northern Virginia, I understand, and maybe eventually to your home in Mexico, and we're all coming down to visit, and so, yes, absolutely, we sure are. We'll be down there next week, uh, ahead of you, because we want to meet your family. Behind the scenes, let me tell you that Arnold has been an incredible servant to God and to this church, too, not only serving on the board, but every Sunday before worship, going around and making sure the message you've left in the chair aren't there for when you, then you come back next week mm -hmm. to making sure that the communion table has been set and all that. And in many other ways, helping with building and grounds and just being who you are. So thank you. Let's say thank you to Arnold, too. <laughs> Scott, there's another part of this that people may not be aware, but as you stepped in to be our music director, 
the generosity that you did in doing it as a volunteer when we were ready to pay you, but you wouldn't do that. You wanted to do it as a volunteer. That says a lot about Scott as well and allowed us to continue to do some other things. It was hard to come up with a way to honor both of you. Uh, and so we have a couple of things that will only be sort of a symbolic of our appreciation and love for you. Um, on the, the communion table today, there is this cross. <coughs> Julie, if you can zoom in on that so folks at home can see it as well. It has a, a music note on it or cleft. That way. When I first looked at it, I thought it was a snake on the crawl, so <laughs> it is not. And it, and it says, uh, Scott Giles, New Life MCC, Music Director, 2020 to 2023. Now, you know, because you've been in D.C. and others of you have been up there, sometimes they'll fly a flag on the Capitol or the White House, and it's, 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 you like to have a flag that's flown on. Well, this hasn't been at the White House or the Capitol, so it's not tainted in any way, <laughs> either way with that. But it is on our communion table Amen. today. And so after service, you'll know as you look at this that because when we come to this table of grace, it's about community and that this is always home, Scott. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank Mark. you. Thank you so oh, you don't get to take it yet. Oh, okay. I got to go back on the community. Okay. I'll put it back up here. Now, let me ask you, be we're not done yet. I said, we, how do we ever say thank you? Julia, where are you? You have something on behalf of the church and about, from the board on behalf of the entire congregation. And I'll let you make this presentation. If you'll go to that microphone, let me hand you one. Good morning, church. It's, morning. it's an honor to be up here. I just want to share a short story about Scott. The first time I ever came into New Life MCC, Scott was actually preaching that, that Sunday morning. And uh, I had no idea. I think it was maybe Tracy in the in the back. She told me, "Well, well, wait until you you meet the pastor." And I'm like, "I thought Scott, <laughs> I thought he did it. He had sold me on this church. So welcoming that day. So I just appreciate you both, Arnold, working with you on the board. Um, thank you so so much. This is for both of you. A gift from from us, uh, and hopefully you can enjoy in your new home." Joey, tell them what it is, because I think folks at home will appreciate that, too. You want to open it up? Open it up. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. Oh, it's a painting from a short So we um, decided to give you guys a certificate, and we're at the location. What the Kennedy it? Center the in Ken D.C. The Kennedy Center in D.C. Okay. Uh, for uh, you guys to enjoy whatever you want, uh, show, orchestra, anything like that. Oh. Um, as you guys settle into your, your new home and enjoy the music that, that D.C. has to bring. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. So, Arnold, we want to make sure it's something you could enjoy, too. You know, this, so, yeah. In good MCC fashion, now will you rise as you're able? And let's put our arms not up like this, but are like you're going to hug them. And let's do a prayer blessing for these two today. Gracious and merciful God, we are ever, ever so thankful that you surprise us, but not only surprise us, but you comfort us. You inspire us and encourage us by bringing special people into our lives. And Scott and Arnold, may you feel that blessing from God, knowing that God is with you here, but as you go, but this is always home. And we love you and we give thanks and praise for the ways that you have challenged us, been with us, encouraged us. And may you indeed both be surprised in wonderful ways as God goes with you, ahead of you in this journey as well. God bless you, my friends. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing together a wonderful song, Count Your Blessings. You may be seated or you may stand up. When upon life's pillows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, 
Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will keep singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. In our prayers today, certainly we continue to lift up Odessa's family, uh, also John Sieda and Randy's family uh, with the passing of uh, John's dad last week. Uh, and they'll be doing a service from New York, uh, and they're moving his mom back to New York as well. He'll be staying, I guess, up there in care. John has a sister or two sisters, I think, and a brother up there, so let's keep them in our prayers. And certainly there are other folks that we know that are struggling with health issues, relational issues, job issues, school, and sometimes just life. Sometimes just listening to the news every day can take us so far down, it's hard to come back up. And so there are ways, and I think that uh, we need to just be aware of that with each other and attuned to each. If you haven't seen somebody in a while, text them, call them, and don't say, well, we hadn't seen what the cat drug in. Don't say that. Just say, hey, just thinking about you. And sometimes that makes a big difference. And uh, one person who's here today that I want to uh, acknowledge too is Fred Kennedy sitting right beside of Reverend Jim. And Fred will be joining us, you'll see, more often as he's going to... Do I dare say he's our new Rhonda? Yeah. <laughs> Fred is going to be an intern uh, as he prepares for ordination in metropolitan community churches. So, Fred, we're looking forward. Fred is down in Raleigh. Uh, and now, and you're, you see, your partner doesn't work for Duke. He works for UNC, right? Yes. Oh, we knew that there's a good family down there in, in that <laughs> regard. So, yes. But you'll be seeing Fred more, and Fred, we're looking forward to you walking this journey with us and helping to lift us up as well. In this moment, let's take just a moment of silence and just release whatever's there that you've been feeling. Just say, oh, God, hold me. Take a deep breath. <coughs> and now say out loud, God hold me. God hold me. Oh dear Lord, as you hold us, as we hold each other, we claim your promises and your presence not only for ourselves, but for healing. We pray for your inspiration and energy and peace in the midst of a chaotic world, knowing that somehow you still steady not only the boat and the storm, but you steady us. And may that peace be ours as we lift up everything, as we release everything that we're feeling in a way that we place our faith and trust anew and afresh, not only this day, but of every day. And the healing that comes, we know, comes in many ways, and sometimes it's all those ways, and we ask for that this day, not only for ourselves, but for those that you know may need it more than us, whether it's healing physically, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, all of that into the wholeness that you called us to. And as we continue to come to this space that we know is new life, we ask that you would make it sacred and holy, not for because of anything so special, but because it's a meeting place for us with you and with each other. And that may that holiness and sacredness be so exciting that it spreads beyond the walls of this church into our community as we know you're already there in the community working as well. We thank you and we praise you for all that you are, all that you make it possible for us to discover about ourselves and encourage in each other. Draw us closer to you and closer to each other. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
words of Scripture from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, and had spent all she had, yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was twelve years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and I think I've lost my way, Still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me till the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side. And I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path.
to take a look at your worship guide at the bottom of that page. And you see our mission statement and our vision statement. Would you read our mission statement together with me? We are an inclusive, diverse, Christ-centered church in which you have the freedom to be who you are, participate in community, explore spiritual transformation, and be part of social action. Alberto, will you come and lead us in the Spanish piece of our vision, too? And as I say the first part, and Alberto says the first part, and Alberto just now informed me that the translation actually is not correct. Uh, at the end of it, it should only say in todo, not e, in todo. Okay, we'll let you guide us on that part. I get corrected all the time on my Spanish, so don't feel bad. All right, our vision is we are ordinary people. Somos personas regulares. Believing God's love is for all. Creemos que el amor de Dios es para todos. Call to reveal God's presence in everyone. Llamados a revelar la presencia de Dios en todos y todas. En todos y todos. Mm -hmm. We got that correct now. Amen. Thank you, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> As we think about how we've been called to this church, all of us, God's Spirit leading us here. And, you know, I'm sorry, Julia, to disappoint you that Scott wasn't the pastor of the church. And yesterday during the... Uh, Odessa's memorial service, Jim and I learned that we weren't necessarily her favorite that Alberto was. And so, you know, what can we say? We're all together in a team. And balancing all that out is what God's Spirit somehow does, right? And so as we talk about our commitment, not only inside of this church, but also in the community, and again, how can we ever say thank you to God for inspiring us to do what allowed us to have these wonderful sparkly ceilings and faux crystal chandeliers and all that? But this is a church building. We are the body of Christ and called not only to celebrate but to be filled up with God's love in a way that makes a difference in a real way in a, with Christ's Spirit leading us in this community too. And that's what the, our offering allows us to be in this space but also to make a difference in the community from Gage, Engage Norfolk. I mailed the application this week for, um, to be part of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And my goodness, if the weather's good, it's a ton of folks. And it's a great time. And we've had church members join because, and it's not just about that. It's about getting the message there in a consistent way for folks to know that God loves them and that we're going to continue to speak up for justice and for other things where people are oppressed or maybe they don't feel like they still have a voice for themselves. And it's important for us. And we may, in the days ahead, we may be called upon to do more than that when we've ever been called upon to do in our lives because it's just a crazy world in which we live that we probably never could have imagined a few years ago. But God's Spirit, and you know what I'm going to say, God's not only behind us, beside of us, and where? Ahead of us, and not just ahead of us, but with us in this journey. Gracious and merciful God, thank you. Thank you for the way that your generous Spirit pours out not only your blessings into our personal lives, but also in a way that allows us to take all that together to make a difference in your name and in your spirit, as so many others have done. And we stand on their shoulders and give thanks for those courageous individuals who at a time couldn't be who they are. And yet we have a space and place for worship. May we not take that for granted. But may we also not take for granted the gifts and skills and callings that each of us have, even if we've come to the party late, even if we've come to the party old, even if we've come to the party young, may your spirit draw us together in a way that truly, truly surprises us and makes a difference, not only in our own lives, but in those to whom we are called. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to give today as God's spirit leads you to give, knowing that as we give to our capital campaign, we don't want to neglect those things that allow us to do those things that we're just talking about. So that balance is there. You can uh, put something in the offering plate. We don't pass them. You can get up and put something there, even in the middle of the sermon, if there is a sermon today, because Tom is supposed to be here. Um, and you can go online, newlifemcc.net, or drop something in the mail. But thank you. Look to your neighbor and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, for, your thank you for your generosity. And now say, I'll be at your house for supper tonight. <laughs> May God's Spirit lead you to give as God's Spirit leads you to give.
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me to stand. Please rise for the doxology as you're able. God, we do need to offer our thanks today for these gifts. Please, God, I us to use these gifts to give you glory in everything that we do. Amen. You may be seated. So, back before Christmas, um, I had talked to Reverend Dr. Tom Melzoni about being here with us today. And um, then we sort of left it and came back in early January to confirm everything. I'm having a conversation with him, and he said, I said, Tom, what else do you need from me to, to be here with us? He said, well, what is it that you want me to do? And I said, wait a minute, you didn't understand I want you to preach that Sunday? I said, you think I'm going to let Tom Melzoni be in the building and not preach, and I have to do it? No, 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 you're supposed to be here. So I was looking forward to, after the memorial service yesterday, to sort of cruising and being the first one in line for lunch today and all of that good stuff. And... So, do I let you vote whether there's a sermon today or not? Yes. Would you rise for the benediction? No. Oh, you don't fall for that anymore, do you? Well, I would have let you do that, but God had plans otherwise. Because and that was on Wednesday, I get the text from Tom that he's been admitted to the hospital and won't be able to be here. He would offer to do a Zoom, and I thought, we're not doing that to Tom and him sick. You know, We'll do it another time when he's able to be uh, well in all of that with us. 
And so I went that, to bed that night and slept a little bit. But then, you know, last Sunday we talked about God speaking uh, to Balaam through the King James word for donkey, you know, through Balaam's ass. <laughs> it wasn't Balaam's ass that God was speaking to me through, but Nika woke me, our, our Yahweh lab woke me up in the middle of the night, and then I couldn't go back to sleep. Well, somehow in the middle of all that, God said, this is what I want you to talk about on Sunday. So it'll take about an hour, and then we'll have lunch. <laughs> You know, earlier today, we've talked about, in this church, for those of you who may be connecting with us, uh, and, and I don't want to say this, there's no such thing as coming late to the party. There's no such thing as being a, a worker that's hired at a certain time. Because remember that parable, they're all paid the same at the end of the day. Right. And whether you've been here as long as Tony, we don't even know how old Tony is, um, but, or whether you have come more recently, or it's not about age, is it? It's just about being together and being present together with God. Know that you're part of what God has been doing. And so we stand on the shoulders. And, you know, many of you, I came this spring, will be 13 years ago to join this journey with you. And that's hard to believe, too. I had more hair then. And let me just clear, clarify this up. I'm looking at Ken on the keyboard. I'm looking back at Scott. I'm seeing James and, and Rich is over there. Baldness is not a requirement to be part of the music or worship team in, in the church. But C Carrie, I see, some, I see some folks out there. And I'll let you wear my bar that, yes, that skull cap earlier today. My first Sunday here, though, when I walked in, I was thinking about this, and it relates back to Scott. When I got here, and I really didn't know anybody, I had heard of Jim and Tony, but I didn't know them. And I walked in, and on the outside over at Norview, Joy was outside. She, where's Joy? I'm going to throw her under the bus on this. Um, she was still smoking at the time. And I think it was Carolyn, Carolyn Bell Johnson, who was standing outside with Joy, smoking a cigarette as I walked in. I walked in, and this person that's been up here already today said to me, I sure have missed you. I missed your pea sermons. I didn't know because Scott and Arnold, and some of you have heard this story before, Scott and Arnold had been in our church in D.C. when I was on staff there and coming in as, a, you know, transferring my clergy in. But they came late to worship, and they left right after communion to go to brunch. So they knew me, but I didn't know them in a lot of ways. So, Scott, we, we got you. We got you. Yeah. It was Arnold. You know, when Jesus came back across the water, we don't know if Jairus or Jairus, however you pronounce his name, knew Jesus personally, but he had heard of Jesus. And his daughter was sick. And he was reaching out, and, and for those of us who are parents, or even if you're not parents, you're just somebody you care about, a loved person, for someone that's important in your life, you're going to do anything possible when you're at wit's end to know how to help that person. And so the person comes, and for a Jewish leader to come, you can imagine how the Pharisees and Sadducees that were not really already not liking Jesus were feeling at that point. And he bows down, and he asks for help for his daughter. And Jesus says, let's go. And then on the way, and, and it's interesting, that's, that Sunday I was talking about when I came that one, I think my sermon that day was healed on the way. And it was about the ten lepers where only one came back to say thank you and they were told to go show themselves in the temple or the synagogue and give thanks to God and they were healed on the way. And in those early years, we had a lot of healing to do, didn't we, for those of you who were here 13 years ago. And with God's help, we did that. And yes, we still got healing to do in ways because all the time we're a work in progress. I'm glad about that. I don't know about you. I hope that, that God is stirring our souls in ways that, that make us aware of those things. You know, I get up in the morning and look in the mirror and I turn the light right back off because I don't want to see exactly how it looks till I get my makeup on and all that. It's, not, it's Alberto, not me, that does that part. <laughs> but on the way... Jesus gets interrupted. And isn't that the way that life does for us sometimes? We get interrupted too, don't we? Remember years ago, and some of you who are old as Tony will remember this, the family circus cartoon that the little boy's mom tells him to go get something in the other room, and on the way he has to stop and play with the dog. He has to stop and drink something. And you see where he's been all these different ways. My goodness. 
God does that in our lives too. So Jesus stops all of a sudden and says, Who touched me? In a crowd of people. You're going to be, somebody's going to be rubbing shoulders and it's like, get me out of this. this is, let me just say, this is probably pre-pandemic before COVID. And they weren't wearing masks or anything in that point. It reminds me of Gary Jones back home that I went to elementary school with and high school with. In second grade, we got to have talent day. And Gary, every time Gary would get up and you know what he wanted to sing? That song, He Touched Me. You've heard that one. Oh, the joy, oh, the joy that fills my soul. And Jesus asking this question, but then the woman who has enough courage to come forward, and sometimes I think we take for granted that, oh, this is just some woman. This was a woman who was on the margins herself because the 12 years she had suffered for something in their day and time, they considered her unclean. And so she was not allowed to be part of the community. Can we relate to some of that? Yeah. Well, I'm not talking about just physical. I'm talking about just being part of the LGBTQAI plus community or a person of color or a woman in this day. In so many ways, people are being made and pushed out to the margins again. We will not stand for that in this church. We will not stand for that in the community. We are called, I believe, to say, who touched me and to celebrate and to be healed and to lift up those who were there. And you can imagine what's going through Jairus' mind. <laughs> My daughter's dying. Come on, let's go. But Jesus took the time to acknowledge this woman who had been suffering all that time. And I wonder as we look around in our lives, as we think about it, and I don't know, I'm bad to say, oh, I've got so much stuff on my plate. I mean, how many of us, my aunt and uncle, when they, when they retired, they, they complained about how busy they were. I said, you're retired. You know, you, there's nothing you absolutely have to do. And how many of us sort of do the same thing in our lives? We complain we don't have enough time. We have enough time for anything we really want to do if we put our minds to it. Or something that's very important. Put your feet out there so I can step on and step on mine at the same time for that too. My goodness. The other thing is, and I think it's said by, by Jesus stopping to take time with this woman that those who are on the margins, and think about the woman who was on the margin and Jairus who was a leader of the synagogue, who was part of the elite of their community, that Jesus was leveling it out and saying this woman is as important as anyone else. And I wonder as we open our eyes and look around, Elizabeth, you asked me this week, you said, how do you see us in five years? And we as the board have, have looked at our strategic plan and all that. But sometimes in the middle of that strategic planning, God interrupts us. And we lost a lot of people this year. And sometimes we have to stop and grieve and hold each other as God holds us. Or other things happen or it don't happen the way in the order that we think it's going to happen. And so I think to answer your question, there are a lot of variables in the answer to that question. And a lot of it, well, remember I've shared this before it depends on the dog. You know, the dog woke me up the other night. But you know what dog stands for, right? Depends on God. Now, you can say depend on God, and then we leave it all to God. That depends on God. Or depend on God, which is our part two to rely on that. And then I like to take it a step further, which is frog. You've got to say it with a southern accent. Frog. Say it with me. Frog. Frog which is fully rely on God. Now, depending on God is not necessarily fully relying on God. And then I like to take it even a step further and say, let's go whole hog. <laughs> say it with me, whole hog. whole hog. Tony, what are we having for lunch? Not hog. And somebody needs to hold Tony because Tony and Carolyn, Carolyn's not here today, God rest her soul. She's in the presence of God. But Tony and Carolyn had the reputation of always being first in line. Somebody tripped Tony at... Somebody trip Tony as he goes today to do that. But a whole hog, Jim's already getting going to make him a plate right now. And you've heard this saying of the conversation between the chicken and the pig, right, about who had a more contribution for breakfast. And the pig said to the chicken, with you, it's just a little offering you got to give. For me, it's the whole thing, a whole hog. It's sausage and bacon. I got to give up the whole thing. 
Sometimes it's hard for us to know where we're going to be, but what I do know this is whatever, wherever we are in five years, we have to not only depend on God and realize it depends on God, we have to fully rely on God, and we're being called to offer our whole selves in ways that maybe will surprise us, even if we think we're old and tired and, reti old and, tired and retired. Did I say that right? I don't know. Bernie, five years ago, at General Conference, and let me say this about Bernie. You've, some of you have heard this story over and over again, and, and you know that if I tell the same story in the same sermon, get my room ready at the home. But I might tell it several Sundays because you all don't remember it from Sunday to Sunday because some of you are sleeping, I know. Just be honest about it, right? So, Bernie, my first interaction with Bernie goes back to when I first came to MCC. Bernie was in Fayetteville. I had been called as the pastor to MCC Winston-Salem before my ordination was official in MCC, I had been an ordained Baptist preacher for years, but it hadn't been recognized. Bernie calls up the elder at the time and says, I don't know about this. And Reverend Jill, it was, not, it was Reverend Jill, Elder Jill's story, said, Bernie, I can appoint him as an interim pastoral leader. Just let it be. Well, and Jill told me to go ahead and have my installation service before my ordination was official in July and in the fall of that year. So we did. I invited all the other MCC leaders. Guess who's the only the only MCC clergy other than myself who shows up, Bernie. <laughs> Bernie, thank you. Yeah. But five years ago at General Conference in Orlando, Bernie says, I'm moving to Hampton Roads. I'll see you soon. When did you get here? Seven. January of 1970. No, no, I'm talking about this time. Oh, this time. A couple years ago. 2021, and then this past year, we saw you here. You've been here with us now. Bernie shows up. He made good to his word. And let me say this about showing up. Showing up is important. You know that's right. I ain't just talking about Sunday attendance, yeah. but I'm talking about showing up to be present with each other and showing up in our community. And we used to, when I worked in marketing, and I hate marketing, but when I worked in marketing, we used to have this thing, you don't just show up and throw up. You show up and you be authentic in who you are so people can see, the, hear the tone of your voice and realize that you're authentic in what you're saying with integrity and transparency. Can I hear an amen to that? How are we going to put our next step forward? How are you as an individual going to put your next step forward? It's a question I think we should wrestle with and not feel like we have to rush to answer because sometimes I think we have pressure to, to answer folks in ways that are just cliche, that are just road, or we answer in ways that we think people are expecting us to answer. But if we answer deep down in our heart, who am I? Who am I called to be? And maybe we're still discovering. I hope we're still discovering that. I've discovered a lot of things about myself in the last week. And I'm just talking about all the stuff that Alberto tells me every week. <laughs> but I think there's a combination. It's a balance of all that. It's getting, you know, and, and we're not always going to, we're not a perfect individual. We're not a perfect church. But you know what? God honors that. And if we are sincere about wanting to live closer to God and to each other, then I think it's a listening thing. It's a listening and it's a seeing thing, seeing where God is already at work in our community and where we want to join that, where we're being called, where we have opportunities to join that, even when our budget doesn't have it. Thanks to Dennis Southers, who is the supervisor of the Virginia Beach Community Services Board, we had this wonderful campaign, and next Sunday we'll show it. If you didn't see the ad that was on WVEC Channel 13 uh, that reached out first to our transgender community about suicide awareness and resources and being a supportive community, and then just in general during the holidays as well, uh, we'll show that next week. That was a $12,000 campaign. And because of Dennis's connection with us, he knew it was important for us to be there with the community and that it was an opportunity for us to be, say, we're a supportive community too. That was a message that needed to get out there. We were able to take advantage of that in a way that we would not have been able to pay for it, but God opened that way. And you know what? Starting in February and in March, 
It's not a $12,000 campaign anymore. It's gone to another $15,000 campaign that's going to reach out to the entire LGBTQAI plus community. Right. And Dennis and I are really advocating for a week in May because it's Mental Health Awareness Month and a week in June for those ads to be there. So our name will be out there. The question is, are we going to be out there too? Will we be passive about it or will we be active and proactive about it? And yeah, it's, sometimes it's like, well, let, me go to, let me go to church and get my church, off, get my church on, you know. And then I'm full, I'm done. But God may very well surprise us and interrupt us in ways along the way that we may need to give attention to, like this woman who just wanted to touch the hem of his garment. And Jesus felt it. If Jesus felt that, imagine if we offer our whole selves to God. Now, sometimes we do that and it's like, Lord, you ain't doing Where are you? You know, we go around saying, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Where's my Mercedes? I grieve my BMW. You know, all of those things. Maybe that's not the blessing that God knows that we need right now. But God is blessing us in so many other ways. So many ways. Turn on the back of your what's happening, if you will. And I looked at this psalm before I realized that it said, for the director of music. <laughs> so, Scott, this was written for a director of music a long time ago. But I want you to, and I'm going to, I'll prompt you when I want you to read a part of this. Read the first paragraph with me. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Make God's praise glorious. Say to God, and say this with me, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. God's awesome deeds for humankind. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of His praise be heard. God has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. Come and hear, all you who have reverent respect for God. Let me tell you what God has done for me. I cried out to Him with my mouth. God, His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened. God has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not withheld Wow. Say it with me in a loud way. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. For the sparkles in our ceiling. For the sparkles in our ceiling. For the faux chandeliers. For the faux chandeliers. For the show faux crystal chandeliers. Praise be to God. When somebody takes a meal to go that we've sent to them and they realize that they're loved by God, say praise be to God. Praise be to God when somebody thinks that they can't be who they are. They're not loved by God. They can't come to this table of grace and community. And yet they see us at pride and they realize that there's a supportive community. Say praise be to God to that. And as we move forward in this community, we may have to in the face of all kinds of things that may end up in the White House or the Capitol building or everything else. Praise be to God that God is going to give us voice to be there. God's going to give us the courage that we need to. And God's going to give us the wherewithal to just be who we are as God has called us to be. Say it with me. Praise be to God. Be to God. The Lord is with you. you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O oh Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory and unending praise as we praise together saying, as your spirit moved across the waters before the earth even took form, as your spirit has been with those patriarchs and matriarchs of old, as your spirit has been with those even then who were queer, who self-expressed in all kinds of ways, 
through the ages and through the years, and yes, even now, because it's not new. But you have again continued to make us anew and afresh as we come humbly to this table. Your spirit touches us when we feel like that no one even knows. Your spirit touches us in ways that renew us, restore us, heal us, and move us forward. We are humbled by your love, O oh God. May your love be something inside of us that we can't contain, but that we always have to share in ways that are kind and gentle and patient and reflect who you are as we become closer to you and closer to each other. Pour out your spirit now upon the gifts on this table, the gifts we hold in our hand and the gifts that others at home may be sharing either today or later because it is your great Holy Spirit that connects us all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus took the bread from the Passover table and blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body. And you know I like the translation that says, this is my body open to you. As often as you receive it, you receive me. In the same way, he took the cup and blessed it and said, this is a new covenant. It is grace, it is mercy, it is forgiveness, it is peace. It's all wrapped up in one. And it's not just for a few and you don't even have to do anything except receive it and maybe be called on to offer that forgiveness and love and mercy to someone else. And sometimes it is so hard because we've been told for so long, so many people have been told for so long, you're not worthy. You can't be a beloved child of God. But God says otherwise. And God's Spirit will find us you know, this passage of Scripture that we read from Mark's Gospel, if you go back and read before, they had been across the water and Jesus had, you know, cast out the demons out of this one man that was on the margins of society too. And even before that, as they came across the water, the waters were so rough in that moment. And Jesus was, what, asleep? And they woke him up and he calmed the storm. Oh, my goodness, thank God. And it was Episcopal Bishop Gene Robinson, who said in the midst of all the turmoil about him being the first openly gay to be concentrated as Episcopal Bishop, that somebody passed, and he had death threats and everything else, and somebody passed him a note that says, sometimes God calms the storm, and other times God lets the storm rage and calms the child. Wow. That's the kind of God we serve who knows what we're going through. We may look like everything's all right on the outside, but inside we're crumbling. God knows that. And that's the beauty of coming to this table of grace, this table of community. In just a moment, I'm going to ask the choir to go ahead and come back up. And, and if you will, come on um, up at this time because it's not about being a member of this church or of any other church. It's about celebrating God's love. So as the choir comes, I want to say to you, if you're not a member of this church, or if you're connecting with us online, you can participate in this table of grace, this table of community, this table of thanksgiving to today because God's love is for you too. So if you're at home today, go get a cookie or a cracker or a cup of juice, a cup of wine. It doesn't really matter what. And God's presence will be there with you too. If you're here today and didn't get one of the individual communion packets, if you'll raise your hand, Jennifer will make sure that you have one. And just raise your hand. And in just a moment, we will share together the body of Christ. But may we proclaim the great miracle and mystery of God's love for us today. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, children of God, all of you, today we proclaim in God's presence as we celebrate around this table that no one is excluded in God's love. May we share together the body of Christ. The cup of grace and mercy and salvation, may we share together. Now I invite you, as you feel comfortable and as you're able, to rise as we sing together the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray.
Let's say thank you to Elizabeth too, because that for me is a beautiful part of our Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Scott, would you and Arnold come back up here for just a moment, please? Now, I know, Scott, that he was already thinking, he didn't let me say anything. <laughs> so, we're here, I'm going to let you say something, if I can find the microphone right here. There's one on the chair. Oh, there's two, one for Arnold too. I was telling Alberto, oh, wow, I didn't prepare a speech. <laughs> no, I just want to say thank you. Um, um, we are so glad to find uh, this church. We learn a lot. Um, I've been able to uh, be uh, with you guys, and it filled me a lot. So I really, really have fun being here with you, meet all of you, and all of you are with us. Thank you. Yeah, and like, with, uh, same with Arnold, I mean, we said that, I mean, this church has been family for us in so many ways. Um, you know, I've said it before, when you're a military family and you're in such a transition, it seems like all of the time, it is so wonderful to have a place you can call home and come back to and know you're going to find that same love that you left, uh, the last time you, you left and you come back. And that's true, it's been that for us. It has allowed us to grow as a family. Um, and actually, I got my nephew here with us today, uh, Marshall Jr., <laughs> who is uh, visiting with us from Savannah. Um, I know he's been blessed by the service as well. But thank you, thank you. I say this all the time. Um, you know, we sing a song sometimes that you can't be God-giving. You have given so much more back to us than we ever gave. So thank you so much. So, Joy, and if you'll turn and look, and I think there are pictures that are going on the screen so you can see them of the cakes that we have today. There's one, Tony has the one for the capital campaign, but you see the one that says, thank you, Scott and Arnold. And um, I've already had somebody say, oh, wow, because they thought it was just going to say, thank you, Scott and Arnold, but they're asking for different pieces of the cake that they can have that is the, as you're sliced up on that cake. <laughs> I'll leave that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Before our closing song today, I'm going to do the benediction and a blessing for food. Are there special instructions in the back that folks need? Uh, we'll do that at the end afterwards and uh, not tantalize people. Well, we should tantalize people that aren't here and make them realize what they're missing today, all that good food. But thank you, Tony, for arranging it with the chef that's back there. Um, and uh, I will be delighted to have this food. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you again for not only your blessings, but your presence and for the ability for us to just interact and be together as we share not just cake, but other things and spiritual things in our lives that you have nurtured us. We ask for your continued guidance, for your strength and mercy and praise and presence as we claim your promises and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us sing together. Heart. 